Yes, on Monday is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1, one hour from now, where Colin was right, where Colin was wrong. Joy Taylor joining me on what will be our best show of the year. Now, it's only like the 7th of January. <laughs> so I don't have to compare it to a lot of shows, Joy, but I think we're going to have our oh, best. okay, that we've done so far. Yeah. Okay. I was I, hoping I, we're not going to peak this early. I have so many things to talk about today. I'm going to wear everybody out. I'm going to wear you out. I've got so many things moving around my head right now. I've we'll given... work through it. So let's just, let me just start with this. I never bought into the Chicago Bears. I picked Philadelphia to win this weekend. All year long, I was getting hate mail and hate tweets and all stuff on my social media. You don't get it. And I thought, blah, blah, blah. Of course, Chicago fans love their team. I never bought into it. I thought it was a college offense. Uh, I thought it was a lot of smoke and mirrors. I called Matt Nagy, the head coach of the Bears, David Copperfield. Look over here. Look over here. And there's the quarter. And, you know, I just didn't buy into it. So I don't have a problem with them being out of the playoffs because my question is, they shouldn't be a Super Bowl team. We don't want our Super Bowl champ to be the, this to be the model where your 10 best players are all on defense. According to Pro Football Focus, and I think that's a very good site, Chris Collinsworth owns some of that, the 10 highest graded players for the Bears are all on defense. Totally unbalanced. You want that to be the model that wins in football? Do you think the NBA would be in a better spot today if the Golden State Warriors dynasty didn't have Durant, Steph, Clay Thompson, Boogie Cousins. No, no, no. It had four Dennis Rodmans who roughed you up, couldn't shoot, rebounded really well, and were great defensive players. There's a reason why leagues modify rules to help offense because it's hard to score. Even Michael Jordan shot only 50%. It's hard to hit a baseball. It's hard to score in football. New England is the current dynasty. They do everything well. They're totally bounced. Their coaching is excellent. Their quarterback is excellent. They always have a good running game. They always have an efficient passing game. They have a situational pass rush, but their defense, once again, is top 10 in the league. Their special teams are excellent. They're really good at home, but not terrible on the road. They do everything well. So football is being rewarded by a team that values everything and can do everything pretty well. The Bears do some things like defense great and have a college quarterback. You don't want that. That shouldn't be the model of what works. If I was a commissioner in baseball, I'd make it easier to hit a baseball. If I was a commissioner in basketball or football, I'd make it easier to score. Do you know what the average NFL score was this year? And remember, this is the big offensive year, right? This was the year that all offense, all no defense. The average NFL score was 26 to 23. We should be helping the offense. And by the way, most of the teams that are left, Indianapolis, New England, Saints, Eagles, Chargers, they play offense and defense. Dallas heavily leans on defense, but at least they do have some offensive stars like Zeke, Zach Martin, Amari Cooper. Kansas City leans heavily on offense, but they have D Ford. They have Chris Jones, Eric Berry. They got good defensive players too. But Chicago is completely, absolutely unbalanced, and I never bought into them. I like football when coaching is rewarded, offense is rewarded, defense is rewarded, special teams are rewarded. Uh, it's, nothing against, it's nothing against this. But you do realize that Lamar Jackson and Mitch Trubisky, who were really very similar, both lost this weekend. Because the game is not built to have all your best dynamic players on one side of the football. So I have no problem with Chicago losing. By the way, the top five scoring defenses now are all eliminated and out of football because they didn't do enough on the offensive side. So I just never bought into Chicago. Listen, I trust my eyes on this, and I think sports for fans is better when it's artistic. It's better when hockey games are four to three, not one to nothing. Baseball games are better seven to six with a lot of base runners. NBA games are better when Kevin Durant can score and not have somebody draped on him. And football is better when I get a 27, 26 game. My team can play from behind. Baltimore can't. Chicago is not very good at it. My team can play with a lead. That's New England. That's Philadelphia. That's the Rams. That's the Chargers. Kansas City and Dallas are heavily weighted to one side of the field. 
but the Chiefs do have some defensive stars, and the Cowboys do have some offensive stars. Chicago is 10 best players on one side of the football. I didn't lose any sleep watching them lose. I don't root for teams or against teams, but I do root for many elements of football because I love the sport being valued. That's nothing against Trent Dilfer. He's on the show next hour and the Ravens. But I don't want that to be the model of football. That was, that was one of the most boring teams I've ever watched. Now, I also don't need my teams to be the fastest show on turf or Kansas City this year. But I never for a second bought into Chicago is the way to do it in the NFL. And they lost because, frankly, like Baltimore, they were completely unbalanced. And that's how seasons end when you're completely unbalanced. All right, let me shift to this. Uh, we had a good weekend. We went four for four in our picks. We, we, we took Indy. We took the Cowboys. Uh, we took the Chargers. And I picked the Eagles to upset um, the Bears. Now, the game I liked the most was Dallas, and it was closer than I thought. But the first thing I do when games are over, I go online or I get a, a box score that tells me this. If you just look at the box score, Dallas had over twice as many first downs as Seattle, 20 more plays, 100 more yards, over double the rushing yards, almost two yards more per run, and completely dominated time of possession. You know what the box score tells you? Because if you watch the game, the game told you Russell Wilson is better than Dak. But the box score tells you Dallas is way better than Seattle. This was a personnel mismatch, and I'm surprised it was this close. Seattle did not have a first down, a first down until their fourth possession. I said going into the game, Seattle's a great story. They're not a great football team. Dallas, we think of them as dysfunctional. Jerry Jones can't win playoff games. They're a highly functioning organization. This is an excellent roster, but because of the limitations at quarterback, they have to win a certain way, and the game went the way it needs to go. Zeke had a big day. They were at home. Defense did their part, and then Dak does what he does often, made one big play late. I did like Dak's run late. Of course, he wouldn't have had to have been a hero if he'd not thrown that awful pass on the previous drive. But if you look at the top 10 players on the Seahawks and the Cowboys roster, Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner make it for Seattle. The other eight best players, Zeke, Leighton Vanderesh, Amari Cooper, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, Jalen Smith, Demarcus Lawrence, Byron Jones, they're all Cowboys. Seattle has two great players. They are not a great team. Dallas is loaded with a limited quarterback. And I think increasingly... Uh, this was actually a very classic Dak Prescott game. He was mostly uninspiring. His stats were meh. He's consistently infuriating and inaccurate. But Zeke, big day, defense delivered, and he makes a play late. We've said from day one about Dak. It ain't pretty, but he has a certain personal resonance and calm in crisis. He tends to be better with the game on the line than he is in the first three quarters with just first downs on the line. But I do think this weekend is interesting because I think Dak, Trubisky, and Lamar are different versions of the same quarterback. The difference is Lamar and Trubisky have a ways to go until they get paid. Dak is about to get paid. And hopefully, once again, Dak Prescott has the self-awareness to understand there is a recipe for Dak to win. And those things all have to work. And they all did this weekend. Home, running, defense, make a big play late. Because it's, it's decision time on Dak real soon. And he'll win a lot of games. And Dallas is not dysfunctional. They're going to win a lot of games. They may win out in every executive and everybody knows it. Philadelphia players know it. But why does Foles make this offense look better and why is Foles 4-0 in the playoffs and why is Foles has a Super Bowl and why did Foles win in Chicago explaining and I think it's pretty easy to explain the Foles Wentz dilemma for the record you're going to have to pay 
both of them this year. <laughs> so you're going to have to make a choice in Philadelphia. And the choice is Wentz. And I'll explain that coming up. Dollar Shave Club, a small company that no longer is. Their goal when they were first introduced was just to show you their great razors. Now it's to own the bathroom. And they have everything you